For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. John 3, verses 16 to 18. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, all of you guys out there in the Legion of Michael audience, thank you very much for being here, for listening to the show, for sharing this with other people, for supporting the show in in however it is that you do, however it is that you do. And, uh, well, we're back to the book of John. We were back. We were in the book of John uh, last week. We're back to the book of John this week. And uh, I had to address a topic, had to address a subject People say, well, you know, I don't know. It is amazing to me how, how people who profane or profane proclaim uh, to be Christians or they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. And they're like, okay, cool, you're a Christian. And uh, so you believe, you have faith, and he's like, yep, sure do. Then you talk to these people, and you're like, well, I don't know if, if such and such is necessarily a sin. You're like, well, why do you think it's not a sin? Well, well, I mean, but that person is a nice person. You're like, okay. Uh, I have a, a Jewish friend, and they're a nice person. I'm like, all right. I have a Muslim friend, and he's a nice person. I have a Buddhist friend, and he's a nice person. I have an agnostic friend, and she's a nice person. Okay, all right, so awesome. Well, I don't think that God would keep them out of heaven. And why is that? Well, because they're nice people, and, and you know, like, well, is that was that the rules? <laughs> it is amazing to me. Well, I guess it's not amazing because Satan is alive, and he's roaming around planet Earth, and the minions of Satan are everywhere. And their job is to make us doubt the word of God. Their, his job is to lie to us. Satan is the great deceiver. And every day Satan is out there and he's, ca- he's causing you to doubt. He's causing you to disbelieve. He's causing you not to have faith or strength in your faith. He's causing you to question your faith. Why? I don't, I don't know if, if God would would keep my neighbor out of heaven because they're they're a nice person. All right. They're a nice person. They're a nice person according to whom? But we talked about this before. Everyone thinks that their man thinks he every man thinks he's a righteous man in his own eyes. Solomon talked about this in great detail in the Proverbs. Every man's way is correct in his own eyes, but God judges hearts. Do you think that Hitler woke up every day and said, I am a horrible, monstrous person and I should kill myself? No. Now, how about Joseph Stalin? How about Mao Zedong? How about Pol Pot? And if you, and how about Fidel Castro? You think that they all thought that they were bad people, that they were evil people? No, that's not actually how the human experience works. Everybody thinks that what they do they're like, oh, yeah, but, I mean, I would look at Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, whatever, and I would say that they're not a nice person. Yeah, but there's a lot of people in the world who think that they were or are. There are still people in this world today, and uh, some of them are in a a, a battalion uh, in the Ukraine. What's the name of that battalion in the Ukraine that uh, that thinks Hitler was a great guy? They think he was like Ferris Bueller. There's people alive today uh, who think Hitler was like Ferris Bueller. They think he was a righteous dude. 
So if you ask them, you'd say, was he a good person? Or are you a good person? And they'd say, yes. Are you a nice person? Now, they might not say that they're nice because they might view niceness as uh, as weakness. But, folks, the opinions of men, you know, when you say, well, my, my, my neighbor, she's an, a good person. Now, she's, she's a Buddhist. She doesn't believe in God. She doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. But, but she's a good person. So God would not keep her out of heaven because she's a good person. You say, okay, you, you say that, but that's you. That's man's opinion. You see, that's the trick. The trick is, is the opinions of man don't count when it comes to judgment. Let's go ahead and continue the book of John, and uh, we'll continue with chapter uh, 3. Pick it up at verse 19. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, so that his deeds will not be exposed. But the one who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds will be revealed as having been performed in God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God judges hearts. We say, well, yeah, 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 but but that person's a good person, but that person's a nice person. What was commandment one? Commandment numero uno. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Bing, bang, boom. We talked about last week, we talked about uh, how God in uh, the book of Genesis said, let us create man in our own image. Bing, bang, boom. And then uh, he gave us 10 commandments, not 157, not 29 even, but just 10. He said, hey, follow these things. Follow these. Do not use my name in vain. I am I the Lord God am your God am a jealous God thou shalt have no other gods before me That means what that essentially means and this 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 is the book this is that goes all the way back to the beginning man before we had smartphones and electric cars and uh, all this stuff that we're so super impressed by modern man we're so super impressed by ourselves We can go into outer space. Congratulations. God is outer space. God is everywhere. God was in outer space before you were born. Ladies and gentlemen, what does nice have to do with it? Nice doesn't have anything to do with it. You know, and if, if it wasn't, you know, the, if the basic rules weren't enough, you see, and that's the thing is God gave his children, the children of Israel, you know, the, uh, and you say, well, Aren't all people children of God? Yeah, actually, that's the way we started out. But it was man that turned his back on God. It was men that turned their back on their God. Wasn't God didn't turn his back on us? He didn't say, "I, I don't, I don't like you anymore." Uh, he sometimes he said, "I'm very angry with you. I am very cross with you, and you are going to be punished." When you punish your children for bad behavior, do you hate your children? You're like, no, that's stupid, Paul. Why would you even say something stupid like that? I don't hate my children because I punish them. Well, they don't like it. They don't want you to punish them. Like, no, I, but I have to because it's for their own good. If I don't, then they're not going to learn. Oh, yeah. Kind of like the entire history of mankind leading up to the birth of Christ. God loved his children, but he had to keep punishing them. He had to keep disciplining them because they were not learning the lesson. But he told them throughout history, he sent them prophets. He sent them David. He sent them Solomon. He sent them Zechariah and Elijah and Elisha and Nahum. And he sent them all these prophets in there. And he said, look, here is the sign. This is what's going to happen. My son, I'm going to send you a Messiah. I'm going to send you a Savior. And they're like, okay, all right. And they waited and waited, and then he showed up, and they're like, no, we don't don't like you, though. You aren't what we were 
planning. You see, you're not what we had in mind. Like, oh, so in your in your little human brain, Christ Jesus was not what you had in mind when you thought, you are like, if you ask someone of the Hebrew faith, you're like, well, don't all of the prophets predict the coming of a Savior? And they're like, well, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, yeah. Didn't David talk about it? You guys like King David, right? You wear a star around your neck. So, well... Uh, didn't he say, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about, how about Elijah and Elisha and so on and so forth? What about those guys? Well, yeah, but with this guy here, this uh, you know Jesus of Nazareth guy, he's not what we had in mind. And besides that, if we surrender power to him, then we have to, well, if we cede power to him, then we have to surrender our power. We like our power. You say, but, there, but Paul, my neighbor, is he's it's a he's a Hebrew or my neighbors are or they're Jewish uh, but and they're good people and I don't believe that God would keep them out of heaven because they're good people folks what does good have to do with it what does nice have to do with it you know my fill in the blank is a nice person I'm sure they'll go to heaven why are you sure of that well because it's a nice thing to do is what God asks of us difficult? Is it hard? Does I mean, you say, well, you know, maybe, I don't know, behaving yourself, behaving yourself might be hard. <coughs> John 3, 16. Super simple. Anybody wants to know, well, what do we have to do? You know, Christ told the Pharisees, oh, was it, uh, oh, who was it? Oh, the one who came to visit him. He said, you have to be born again. And uh, he's like, I don't understand. He said, all right, let me break it down for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him, whomsoever believes in him, shall not perish but have eternal life, salvation, going to heaven. And it says, the one who believes in him is not judged. But the one who does not believe in him has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. It's really not complicated. But do you notice what Jesus never says, whether it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Revelations, wherever he was speaking, wherever the red letters are in your red letter edition of the Bible, did he say, well, if your neighbors think you're a good person then then you're saved and you will receive salvation if your neighbors think you're a nice person what do we need when when uh, nicodemus when nicodemus asked him what do i need uh to do did jesus say well just be nice be make sure that your neighbors think you're a nice person and if your neighbors think you're a nice person well then, bingo, bango, man, you're you're in, you're in like Flint. Is that what he said to him? You say, well, no, Paul. I know he didn't say that to him. Well, there you go. It's not difficult. It's right here. The instructions are super simple. And going back to last week, you have the free will, or as my my friend who uh, from the Mormon Church uh, would say, you have the free agency. You are allowed. God loves his children so much that he's given them free will. You have to come to God. You have to come to Jesus Christ freely. If you freely come, then you will receive salvation. He's not going to force you. You see, man is who forces other men to do things. It is man, it is Satan that tries to cajole you and trick you and lie to you and deceive you. It is other men that will force you at the point of a gun to do certain things. To either say things or to not say things or to behave a certain way or to not behave a certain way. That is the way of man. That's not the way of God. That's not the way of his son, Jesus Christ. He's not going to force you. You see, and that's where people get confused because they're used to the ways of man. People are used to the ways of man. And when they encounter something that is not the way of man, then it confuses them. But I'm here to tell you, 
that if you go freely of your own free will to Jesus Christ, you shall receive salvation. And if you do not, then you will not. It's really no more complex than that. And the words nice and the words good don't have any place in that equation. So do nice people go to heaven? Well, it's a loaded question, and I knew it was when I wrote it. Yes, some nice people who are believers, who believe upon the Son of God, will. And some nice people who have made the conscious, free will decision not to. They've heard about this Jesus guy. Like the Jews in, in, uh, you know, certain Jews, many Jews were converted, many weren't. The ones who screamed to for them to give them Barabbas, those people, the ones who screamed, give us Barabbas, they uh, made the conscious decision, no, and they're not going to be standing next to you at the pearly gates. Sorry, that's the way it works. It's not my way. I didn't make that up. It's right there in the book. And I'm just reminding you of what the book says. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, that is about enough for today. I think I've uh, delivered enough information to you. But before we go, as always, we're going to say the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies, and Satan and his minions are out there every day. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront that evil when I see it, not to shy away from it, not to hide from that evil, but to confront it, to get in the face of evil and say, oh, no, I'm not going to cower before you. The strength to destroy that evil. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen.